Now, here are the numbers. Here are the numbers. And look at this. A $4 billion surplus. It was forecast to be $37 billion deficit. A $40 billion turnaround. Is that great? Great management? I'm not so convinced because if you look at the last year of the Libs, they forecast to be a $106 billion deficit and they brought it in at, at 32. So they had win four gains too. They had a $70 billion turnaround. Labor Party in the first year had a $40 billion. The Australian government is a cash machine right now and I'll show you that in a, mit, a bit. But look at revenue. This year came in at $635 billion, 8.8% more than the year before, and $30 billion more than expected. $30 billion, just a loose bit of change. Loose bit of change. But expenditure was on track, and that's where you give credit to where credit's due. They didn't spend it. By God, you would have been tempting. Imagine if someone just dropped an extra $30 billion in your bank account. What do you reckon you'd do with it? I know where I'd be going. But uh, you can see here they've done pretty good. You know, growth in revenue, much better than growth in expenditure. GDP was strong at 325. It's expected to fall off. But this is the big winner, the unemployment rate. 3.5% of Australia is almost considered full employment. But what you've got to remember, in Australia, if you're unemployed, you get paid handsomely. But if you're working, you pay tax handsomely. So the turnaround from someone not working to working is tens of thousands of dollars, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars a swing either way. So when we're at near on full employment, that puts sh sh uh, truckloads, I have to be careful, truckloads, <laughs> truckloads of extra money in government coffers and takes money on their spending side takes money off the spending side. And that's the big thing that's happened here. And you see CPI is at 6%. Snuck now up to 7s and 8s. Allegedly going to come back to 3.25. We'll talk about that later. But if you remember the last time Labor was in government, they kept saying, oh, we've got big deficits because we don't have enough revenue. The revenue wasn't so good. And to be truthful, if you go back and look at my videos from there, it was a blatant lie. Every year they were in power, the revenue went up, but it was just never enough to cope with their expenditure. That always went up more. But look at the revenue growth now. It's gone from, and look here, this is G, uh, what was it, COVID. Is that what we just had, that COVID crisis? It's hard to remember that, isn't it? Revenues were $500 billion in those bad years, $630 billion. That's more than 20% more this year. And over the last five years, revenue growth to this run government is 30%. Yet if you look at the way they talk right now, they're saying it's not enough. We need to increase taxes. We need to do this. The Greens want to take away the future tax cuts and tax people even more and more and more to spend more and more and more, which is terrible. There's no appreciation for what it's bringing in, but it's huge. But it's going to rise from this 635 up to $735 billion over the next five years, up another 15%. But that's not in the conversation whether that's fair and reasonable. It's just, no, that's just how it is. Take it or leave it. If you have a look at this, you know, budget payments were up 4% over COVID. Now, that doesn't seem much, does it? But don't forget, during COVID... Australia, like every other country in the world, had huge amount of expenditure for subsidies, vaccines, shutdowns, employment relief. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Australia spent over $280 billion on COVID measures alone. So we had abnormal expenditure. But now all that's over, apparently, and we're still spending that and more. And no one's talking about that because the great thing is they set the bar high and we go, oh, look, spending growth's only up a couple of percent. How wonderful. They're showing restraint. That's not restraint in my mind. That's advantage. But we'll see what happens. And of course, if you look at the deficit, somehow, regardless of the fact we've just had a huge surplus, and I'm saying huge, but if you read the news in Australia that said, Nominal, small, marginal. When did $4 billion become bugger all? 
I wish I had $4 billion. I'm sure you do too. But it's token, apparently. Token. But we've gone from $4 billion surplus to next year we're going to a $14 billion deficit on the back of revenues rising from six thirty to six sixty eight. So revenues are going up another $30 billion and we're going to go into a deficit and people are going, that's okay. How can we have this level of revenue and not start being surplus, surplus, surplus all the time? It makes no sense to me. But somehow the deficit's going from 14 to 35 and then up to 36 in the two years thereafter. So it's going to get worse. It's just incredible. But the good news is it's better than we thought it was going to be. It was meant to go up to 51 and 47, apparently. So the Libs thought 47. They've got the structural rights, so it's come down. And we're meant to celebrate this. And this is like sleight of hand to me. Oh, how lucky are you? It was going to be 51. It's only 35. Instead of going, oh, my God, why is it 35? That's not right, but that's okay. And then if you have a look at the debt, net debt's $550 billion. Was meant to be as high as 766 and 980 originally during COVID when everyone thought the world was going to fall off the cliff. So that's fantastic. But that's a celebration. But it's still growing over the next few years when the revenue is escalating massively. So I don't know. I'm not a big fan on these numbers. Amazing growth in revenue correspondingly being wasted on the other end. Now, if we were getting stuff for it, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. But what are we getting for it? So let's have a look. 